Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. All right. What's up, YouTube? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Race to 100. I'm Neil Batang. Hi, I'm Rick Storcell, and we're on episode number 54. So, Ricks, man, we've been talking about a whole lot of issues over the last few weeks, Indeed. man. What are we, uh, what's good for today? So, the Supreme Court recently, we've, we've covered a couple of Supreme Court rulings in the past couple of months. We've been doing this for almost two months now. It's crazy. But on Thursday of this past week, the Supreme Court ruled on a case that has been out there for almost a decade. It was Fisher versus University of Texas. And this had to do with affirmative action and how affirmative action is applied in the cases of schools like University of but Texas. But what makes this specific case of affirmative action so unique? So this was a white person, a white girl, challenging the University of Texas, saying that because of the color of her skin, she was denied admission to uh, the African American and Hispanic communities, feeling that she had better grades and she had better accomplishments than some of those minorities who had been accepted. That's, that's and that crazy. was not fair to her. That, you know, that's, you know, whenever, it's crazy, right? Because it, it happens so little, it happens like every, like, you hear about this happening, like. Reverse racism. It, exactly, but when you hear that, it's like, it was like, <gasps> it's like, you know what I'm saying? You're almost like, you're like, like flabbergasted or befuddled that like someone's even throwing it out there. <laughs> and you, the first thing you want to do is, is ask them, why are you inclined to say that you are experiencing reverse racism? So, want to continue? Because she, she had a, a, I guess, a decent resume, and she felt like those people who were accepted to the University of Texas, it just wasn't fair to her. that Because she was a white person, she was being disadvantaged. So, and so the Supreme Court ended up ruling and this was, a, this was a weird ruling number. There's normally nine Supreme Court justices. Uh, one of them has passed away, so now there's only eight. We're waiting for Obama's nominee to get confirmed, Merrick Garland. So that leaves eight. So a lot of times, cases will end four to four. This case, one of the justices had to recuse herself, and the ruling ended up being four to three in favor of the University of Texas and their affirmative action program. Wow, so it was, clo it was close though. It was close, okay. and they were thinking before, before Scalia had passed away uh, that affirmative action was in trouble because oh. in 2013 there was a blow to uh, the Voting Rights Act. Of those eight, Riggs, how many of them are conservatives and how many of them are Democrats? So, Scalia was a Democrat. No, he was he was conservative. He was conservative. He was the most conservative member okay. on the court. Okay. So normally it's it's four to four, I would say, uh, and then you have the swing vote of Anthony Kennedy. So there's one member okay. who goes back and forth. Gotcha. Scalia passed away, so now it is either four to four or five to three okay. uh, on the progressive side. Okay. When it okay. comes to to court cases, so in this instance. Anthony Kennedy, who once again was the moderate swing vote, he could go either way. No one ever knows how he's going to decide, but he, he flips the court one way or the other. He's okay. normally the deciding vote. Okay. And he said that the way that the University of Texas ran their admissions program, that it still contributed in its own intangible ways to the diversity of campus, and that there was nothing blatantly discriminatory against this white girl who was claiming that she was not accepted because of the color of her race. That, in fact, University of Texas was fulfilling its duty to ensure diversity On through, their its own, through its own means. Okay, okay. Wow. That's, you know, that's, that's interesting. That's a very interesting case. I've never seen anything like that happen. Where, it, it, was a, it was a surprise. Where, I mean, where, it, where, it, it where, where, where right. a Caucasian person sues an institution or files, you know, a lawsuit for for being racist in their own way. And this is actually something that's been picking up trend. There's two other schools right now that yeah. currently have affirmative action cases in that are similar to this, Harvard University and University of North yeah. Carolina. Yeah. They're they're both in the news right now, but this ruling likely means that affirmative action will be upheld in those instances as well. So Good news for proponents of affirmative action. Doesn't look like there's really going to be any change in, any the, foreseeable, soon. in, in the foreseeable future. Okay. Um, I guess unless Donald Trump wins and appoints his own Supreme Court justice. Okay. Which, you know, could be Gary Busey, okay. for all we know. Okay. And who knows how he'll rule. <laughs> Man, 
That's crazy. So, I mean, you know, there, I think there, there is still an acknowledgement by the yeah. Supreme Court that, that race has a role to play when it comes to equality, like getting people proper education. Barack Obama supports affirmative action in the sense of wanting to be able to give disenfranchised communities, poor communities, many times communities of color, mm -hmm. a equal shot that, they, that their white counterparts in the suburbs do not have. No, you mean an equal shot that their white counterparts in the suburbs do, do have. Do have that they don't have. That they don't have. Thing. That's for correcting. Oh, it happens, man. But, man, <laughs> well said, man. Well said. That was a very interesting story. I'm glad we we, uh, we touched base on that. I mean, kudos to the young lady for trying to stand up for what she believes. Or she's not a very in. nice person. Though. She's not I've a very seen, nice person. I've seen interviews. Yeah. She's, she's not a very nice person. Uh, but... You know, it takes all kinds, right? Yeah. There's always got to be a villain in the story. Yeah. Too bad things didn't. Uh, too bad things didn't go our way. So yeah, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Race to One Hundred. Let us know what you guys think about the Supreme Court's decision to uphold the idea of affirmative action amongst colleges and universities here in the U.S. We'd love to hear your feedback. Rick, is there anything else you'd like to add, man? We will catch you next time on the Race to One Hundred.